we're glad that you're here today with us. And um, again, if you're visiting, we have a great children's church, or feel free to have, sit together as a family. As I said before, we get so busy in our daily lives um, in this culture, uh, in this iPhone culture, that we don't see eye to contact much with each other. We don't sit together much. We don't communicate much. And I love when I see teenagers sitting with uh, their moms and dads in church. So I want you to turn uh, to your Bibles to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 32 through 36. You know, I want to share some way. Every, every week when uh, I look at my watch and I see it's about noon, I start getting really nervous, you know. Maybe you don't, but I do. But anyways, so sometimes I got to turn my message into two messages. And we're going to look at the, the authority and the, and the power that we have today, kind of bringing in from our Heavenly Father. We're going to build on that and how the authority and the power that you have in Jesus' name. And, and we're going to look at that today. And there was just too much last week. I thought, you know, I got to cut it off. So, and uh, I just thought, you know what, I'll just bring it in more this week. So we, we, forget, we forget who we are in Jesus. Again, as I say every week as you walk through the door, did you remember last week, you have the power within you through Jesus Christ. He's given us his spirit to withstand any temptation, to deal with any discouragement, or whatever you're going to face with a phone call this week. His spirit was in there. Sure, physically, it, might not, it, it jolts us, whatever we hear, when we hear something, but then we remember who we are in Christ, and that's what we want to look at tonight, the, the authority and the power that we have in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for, Lord, how you ordained the local church, how that we come together. Lord, you bring each and every one of us here through the power of your spirit every week. It is always a miracle to me when I see all these people here, all throughout the United States, all throughout the world, that come together on the first day of the week Jesus, when you rose from the grave to worship you in hope. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. And Lord, just speak to us today. Help us to remember in your name the power and the authority that we have in you, the Son of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I want to ask you a question. How many of you, like if you're, if you're teenagers, you probably can't relate with this, Okay. But how many of you, you got to be honest with me now, because I want you to raise your hand. Because I, I need to know this. I just want to need to know this. We're going to build on this. How many of you in grade school, in junior high or high school, when you were in school, got spanked? Oh, there's more than that. Come on. So, okay, so, okay, keep them up for a minute. Man, you put them right down, didn't you? <laughs> okay, all right. Boy, we, they, you know can't do that today, right? I got spanked in grade school. I got spanked in high school. You know, I mean, I did. I, got, I, got, I, was, I was running down a hall. It was a snowy day, and I went outside, and it was all the people were down the hall. I ran outside, grabbed a big old, big old ice ball, and just flung, flung it down the middle of the hallway. And the vice principal was standing not too far behind me, and uh, so I got whacked pretty hard for that. But anyways, I, I, just, I don't know what it was, about six, about Second grade and fifth grade, just went to the principal's office a lot, you know, <laughs> spanked a lot. But, and I told you this before, I think, that I, I always took the spanking over any type of, of uh, extra time staying after school because I didn't want my mom and dad to have to come pick me up because then they knew I got in trouble. But, you know, there's an authority there. There's a hierarchy there in, in, in school. There is a, it, it stops with the principal. There is an authority and with that authority, there is power. Now, I could use that in any really example. Work, uh, police officer, uh, situation that, that uh, you might be in that you work and have a boss, whatever we have. There is an authority. Now, you can have power. You can really have power, whatever it might be. But if you don't have authority, the power really doesn't mean anything. 
So we look at together today through, through Jesus Christ and what he has done for us in his spirit. I want you to know as a Christian today, you have not only the power within you, but you have authority. And look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 32. Luke chapter 4 and verse uh, 32, and I'm going to read down through verse 36. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in his synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. In other words, the demons that were in the, this man. What have you to do with, do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? They knew who Jesus was. Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. They were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with the authority and power... He commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. You know, as you read that, I I want you to understand that, you know, as we go through life, especially in family situations, uh, you can have um, arguments, if you will, uh, whether it might be siblings, you could be grown up, it doesn't matter, or whether it's in in a relationship, or whether it's a husband or wife. And you have those, you have those arguments, and, and, and human nature is you have the argument because you, you feel you're right, and you feel you're right, and you want to win. And that's what we do. That's human nature. But I want you to know that, that as it says here, listen carefully in verse 32, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. I want you to think about it in this way, the authority that you have in Christ. I want you to know when you're in certain situations as a believer and you're in the midst of an argument, whatever it might be, are are you relaxed or or are you firing off inside? Because I want you to know that the, the power that you have is not only so strong, but you have an authority, even though it might be someone that is over you as a boss or whatever it might be, you as a Christian, we have the authority. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is this. Know that right when you're having that time, that the word that you have that is coming from the Spirit, your Spirit, is so powerful that you can walk away from any situation and knowing that that, that word is going to stay with that person. And if you said it in the right way and did it in the right way, it's going to be effective. Not that you're yelling at them and they're yelling at them or you, they're right and you're wrong and he's wrong and you're right. All this, no. Know that if in a spirit of meekness and fear and humility, as you go into whatever situation is, your word, let's put it this way, your words have no power. God's words do. Now, that being said is you want to come across in a way that not that you're right, not that you're going to win, but in the name of Jesus that you're able to so come across in a way as Jesus did with his teaching, they were astonished. Now, here's what always got me. They were astonished. They were astonished. But did they change? That was their choice. That's, that's so important. People might, you see in the different verses in the Gospels, they were astonished at his teaching. They were astonished at his word. But did they change? That's a person's choice. But with you or with me, know that you don't have to think that you win right now. I I get so upset when I see, um, I want to be careful when I say this, when I see uh, preachers on the sidewalk or you see them at, I remember when I was at, at the University of Arizona out in Tucson and I was going to school out there and there was a guy every day who would go in the middle of the courtyard and he would take his Bible out and he would scream and he would yell and, and the college students were you know, yelling back at him and, and it, this would happen about a few times a week and I would just go, I would take my lunch and just go watch. I wasn't, you know, but... It, it was totally not effective. This, this guy was not being effective. 
See, we need to, if we're going to do it in Jesus' name and we have power and authority, we do it in love. I don't know if you can find it on YouTube, but there was, there was a, a guy who was doing the same thing at an amusement park. Uh, and he was at a place, I guess he could do it. And a girl comes up to him and has this on YouTube, and, and they're going back and forth. And, and it was so great. And she was a strong Christian. And she goes up to this guy that's yelling and screaming at everybody that they're dying, going to hell, and all this thing. And he might even be saying the truth and what he is, and don't get me wrong. But it was just the way he was saying it, or always not willing to listen to anybody and think that he's got to win. And you don't win anybody to Jesus. I want you to understand this. We don't win people to Jesus by winning an argument. You don't do it. We do it in love. And I, she said something that I'll never forget. So this is on video. And she's speaking to this guy, and he's yelling and trying to get people uh, to get saved, which is the right motive, but he's just going about it in the wrong way. And she comes up to him, and she says this. She says, well, I'm a Christian too, and I, I just don't believe the way that you're going about this. is. I, it just doesn't seem to be right to me. And she really, really humble way she's talking. And they're going back and forth and back and forth. And I think she said something like this. She goes, you know what? I believe that by the time that we die, that I'll be able to lead more people to Jesus doing it the way I do it than the way you do it. I thought, wow. Where is it in your life that you might have power, but the true authority is staying humble and staying knowing deep down that it is God's word in your marriage, at, at work, in any situation that his word tells us in Isaiah, it never comes back void. That's how powerful his word is. So are you going to take your word and think that it's powerful and more far powerful and you're going to argue and you're going to do these things, whatever situation is, or are you going to do as, as Jesus did to know that him being the son of God, the power that he had from heaven ultimate above any power. You know, it says that Jesus is above all, any principalities and powers, way above the heavens. That's how much power that he has in the authority. Why don't we use his words more? I can't, you've heard me say this before, I can't stand when I drive by a church and someday when we have our own building things, we'll have a marquee out in front. I'm not going to have a bunch of little cute sayings that are on there, you know, one week makes someone weak or whatever it says and it has it spelled different, you know, and it's real cute, whatever. I, I'm sorry I'm not trying to get down on anybody, but why don't get this? It's a church that represents God's word. Why doesn't the church and the marquee have a Bible verse on it? I don't understand it. You can drive around Summit County and see that. Well, I'm kind of off on a tangent. I'm sorry, but anyways. <laughs> all right, so let's get back. Anyways, all right. God's word is so powerful for you and for me that they were astonished at his teaching. And the Lord gives us this verse, and he goes on further to show us even the demons. You know, sometimes, not a lot of Christians, but sometimes demons even have more faith than some Christians. Because the Bible says they believed that he was the son of God. They trembled when they were around him. Don't do this or don't do that to us. And they had to leave a person in Jesus' name when Jesus would speak. That's the authority, not just power. That's the authority that Jesus has in this world against any enemy that comes against you. Let's look at another verse. Look at Mark chapter 3, and, and this is so important that, that we realize when we have this authority who Jesus is. Mark chapter 3 and verse 10. Verse 10 11. For he healed many so that many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him. And the unclean spirits, in other words, the demons, when whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out saying, you are the son of God. You are the son of God. Ask, there's been surveys in, in, taken in the United States that 95% of the people believe in God, in the United States and America. But you know that only 40% of people believe that Jesus is the son of God. Most religions do not believe that God had a son. See, because they don't want to come face to face with their sin. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And when we believe in him and we accept him as our savior for forgiveness of sins, we have eternal life in heaven. He is the son of God. Now, why is it so important? Because his kingdom is not of this world. He is a prince from a world that lasts forever. And you are part of that power. There was a a professional golfer uh, was in the news. This was a few years ago. And... uh, a Saudi prince was uh, intrigued with golf. And this prince wanted to know more and learn more about golf, so he invited this professional golfer to come over for a week to teach him everything he knew about golf. So professional golfer went over to the Saudi prince and uh, did whatever he did. At the end of the week, he was so amazed and so pleased everything he learned, and and he said to the professional golfer, what can I do for you? And, you know, he's taken off guard. He said, I don't, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. And then he finds, he says, well, you can just, I don't know, buy, buy, me, a, buy me a golf club. And, or get me, you know, make me a golf club or something like that. And um, he says, okay. So about a month went by, two months went by, and the golfer kind of forgot about everything. And he gets uh, a letter in a mail. It's from this Saudi prince. He opens it up, and it's not a golf club, or what you think. He opens it up, and he begins to read it. It was a deed to a golf club, country club. <laughs> he bought him a whole golf course. And I thought, you know what? Why don't... <laughs> Why don't we look at Jesus, not so much in a material way, but why don't we look at Jesus in a way that he owns everything. He is in control. His authority is in control of everything. And we go to him and we ask, in and in 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 the Bible says we need to come boldly before the throne of God because of Jesus Christ, because of the Son of God. He is a prince from the world that lasts forever. His authority can do anything and give you anything in your life. And I don't, I'm not going down a material road, and the Lord wants to bless us financially, and I believe that he will if we do what we're supposed to do and live a certain way. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is, do you look at Jesus as the Son of God who has the authority over all, high above everything in this world, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's over all. That's the authority that you and I have in his name. What is it in your life today, right now? Will you recognize the Son of God who is from a kingdom? He says, what is bound in heaven will be bound on earth. What is loosed in heaven will be loosed in earth. Heaven on this earth for you and for me, in your marriage, in your work, in your relationship, in your health, whatever it might be, do... Are, are we living in such a futile way or such a way that we feel like we're just dredging through? Are we saying, you know what? The Lord has got this. His authority is so powerful. Just like you today. When you have a, a, a car, and if you have a, a certain kind of sports car, whatever you have in a parking lot, whatever, you, there was a power in that engine. But you have the keys, you have the authority. And you start that power every time you get in it. See, that's the authority that we have in Jesus. He's given us the keys. It's so simple. We take the step of faith saying, Lord, I know whatever it is, whatever I'm fearful of, whatever I'm not sure of, whatever is going on, I know by faith that you are the Son of God and what you've done for me in the cross of Calvary. By your resurrection power, there's nothing that can't be accomplished or be victorious in your name. Everything can happen if I believe. If I be- if the demons believe, you mean we can't have the faith? I've always said it just takes one word in a relationship, in a situation that we use, one word, one verse, whatever it might be, in the name of Jesus, 
that can change someone's life. I was speaking in a mega church years ago when I was at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, and I was asked to go speak at another mega church. I don't know, they had like six or 7,000 on a weekend, and I spoke three different services and packed the whole, each service had three or 4,000 people. Anyways, this is a large church. So the last service I spoke at, the third service on a Sunday, uh, I was just getting ready to give the, give the invitation. And I said, it's all about trust. Are you willing to trust Jesus? Service was all over. Lady came up to me, and she was Dallas. She goes, Pastor Dallas, she goes, I, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, absolutely. She goes, you know what? She goes, I had to work this morning. But she says, I was walking in just before the invitation started. And I just heard you say one thing, just one word, trust. Trust in Jesus. And that's, that's exactly what I needed today. Just one word. That's how powerful the Lord's word is. We take it for granted. It's there in your coffee table or beside your bed or in your car every second of every day. And all we have to do is open it up. And the power connects with your spirit. Let's look at a couple more verses and we'll close. I want us to look at a revelation. I, th I think the next verse we're looking at is the last. I always like to say, People call it revelations. It's not revelations. It's revelation. And really, at the very beginning, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. It means to reveal what is going to happen in the end times, but also how that we can learn from this and how that we can be victorious even in our daily life. Revelation, we're going to look at Revelation. I think it's, uh, I think, where am I at here? <laughs> Revelation chapter 12, here we are, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. This is anyone that's a believer. This is any of us. This is a verse for an example for you and for me. In the name of Jesus, what we can do because of his authority and his power. And they overcame him, meaning the devil, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. In other words, you and I don't win on our own. It's through the forgiveness of sin that we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and his power through his spirit comes to dwell within us. And by that power, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we overcome the wicked one, the accuser of the brother of all of us. And by the word of their testimony. You know what? I want to encourage you on this. You know what's so important about you about when you talk to somebody and, and, and you give just maybe a part of your testimony when you're, you're sharing that? So let me ask you a question. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time, just to, even a portion of it, grocery store, workplace, family member, I don't, I don't know, that you, you shared a part, if not all of your testimony. What's happened to you? The uniqueness of your, of your failures, of your downfalls, of your hurts, of your tragedy, of your health situations, of your losses, and how that you overcame that through the blood of the Lamb. See, when you hear yourself talk about Jesus, you're hearing Yourself, from the Spirit of God, through Jesus, you're actually giving yourself, once again, a reminder of hope. This is what the Lord did for me. Every time I, I run into somebody I haven't seen for years and I know what happened to me and I'll just say a couple of things, I'll walk away and go, man, Lord, I just can't believe how you did this and did that and how you got me through. I just, I can't. And I'll be talking, you know, you know how you do, you talk to yourself. But I'll be talking to myself, so I'm drawing like, Lord, I, you did the, I mean, at the exact second that I couldn't go any further, he came through. Again, and again, and again. 
The word of your testimony not only leads others to Jesus, but it encourages you what the Lord has done in your life. And finally, the last part of that says, and I believe it has to do with humility and pride. And they did not love their lives to the death. He's talking about those, I believe, in any end times that we know that are going to be martyred. We don't think about eternity enough. Most of you here today have people waiting for you in heaven. No more pain, no more sorrow, and no more suffering. And a house that's not made with hands, and I can go on and on and on, but you know what grace things, one of the verses in the Bible says, and we will dwell with Jesus we will be with him forever. That's what makes heaven, heaven. Very famous actress was asked one time, you know, you've traveled all the world, you've seen the most beautiful places. What is the most beautiful place you've ever seen? And without, without a hesitation, she says, it all depends who's with me. I thought, what a great answer. She didn't matter where she could have been on, you know, in the back porch of her house, but Wherever she traveled, wherever she's been, it, it all depends on who's with me. See, the power, the authority that, that we have at, uh, that's with us, that is part of a kingdom, will last forever. Here's the last thing, and all we have to do, and we'll close. I think it's in John chapter 16 and... John 16 and verse 23. Jesus had to keep encouraging those that he loved, the disciples, because he was leaving and he kept trying to prepare them that he was going to go. He says, you know what? I can only be with you so much. I have to go pray off. I'm, I go pray sometimes by myself. I, I'm in other cities, and, and I can only be with you so much. But after my death and resurrection, when I leave to go back to heaven, I'm going to give you my power by my spirit. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to give you my power that will be with you. Tonight, in the middle of the night, if you can't sleep because something's going on, do you know that Jesus is right there with you? He's right there. If you can't sleep, He's there to listen to you, to talk with you. And this is what he wants us to understand that, and this is where that power and authority takes place every day, is when we do it in this way. Not mechanical, but we're reminded when we, when we pray and we ask for things for Jesus to do in our life. John 16, 23, and we'll close. And in that day, in other words, when Jesus has, has, has ascended into heaven, he says right after that in the, in the beginning of the book of Acts when the church started, and in that day you will ask me nothing. Jesus is not going to be there, most assuredly. I say to you, though, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. That's not just power. That's authority when you can call heaven down to protect you in warfare, when you can call heaven down in a health situation, and when you can call heaven down when you're fearful and you're not sure what's going to happen. And you talk to the Lord, and you ask him these things, and that's why we do what we do. And when we pray and we say, and that's why you do it in this way when we pray. And Lord, I ask you these things, Jesus in your name because through the blood of the lamb through his death his blood that was shed on the cross of calvary and through the power of his resurrection you have authority and power put together through the name of jesus christ to bind anything in this earth from heaven and loose anything because you you through the name of jesus have the keys to unlock any door. And you know what Jesus says in that same 
book, Revelation, he tells us in Revelation 3, when he's opened a door in your life, no matter what someone tries to do, when you pray in Jesus' name and you know the power and authority that you have in him and you don't give up, he says, no matter what it is, I've opened a door that no one can shut. No one. And all the time that I was going through, the years that I was going through and what I was going through, the Lord just kept telling me, Dallas, just stay close to me. Stay faithful. The door of there you preach is still open, and it will never shut. And one day, you will do again what you love to do. By God's grace, I hope I can do this till the Lord takes me home. And I hope that I can be a living proof to you that you have power and authority, whatever it is that you feel that you can't win against in this life. It's a relationship that you've gotten so bitter about, or it's a fear that's in your life. Give it to Jesus. Cover it forgiven through the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and the heaven that you look forward to. And in his name, you ask him to do what only he can do and watch what he does in your life. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, help us to never underestimate the power and authority that we have in your name. Lord, we forget so easy that who you are, that even the demons trembled and recognized that you are the Son of God. Lord, we know that through you that we are part of a kingdom that lasts forever. And Lord, you brought us here today, remind us once again It's not our strength, because your strength, you tell us in your word, your power is made perfect in our weakness. At our lowest point, we can be the strongest. Lord, we will never be able to understand that except by seeing you. And Jesus, it is in also the power of your name. The demons tremble. Lord, may we come to you today, and Lord, I just want to take right now, there's a brother and sister in Christ, or whatever if it's a health situation, if it's a loss of a loved one, if it's bitterness, if it's physical problems, Lord, if it's alcoholism, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we can't do it on our own. But we're here today to hear your word and your word with authority and power through the spirit that lives within us. You tell us we're more than conquerors. Lord, we thank you that we can win those battles and those wars because of what you've done on the cross of Calvary, and we live by your resurrection power. Lord, as we close today, and Ben leads us, if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, or may they accept you today as Ben leads us in an invitation song, Jesus, in the power of your name, amen. Will you stand?